This video will show you a simple Hello World program using FASM on Windows. When we run a executable program, this is the memory space that is set up on Windows. So we start with the, at the high address, we start with the operating system kernel space. Okay, then right under that is the stack and it actually goes down in memory. So the stack is used particularly when you call functions and create variables within functions. Those variables go onto the stack. They're pushed onto the stack. And then when you return out of the function, they're popped or removed from the stack. And then the heap is another part of the memory space when you create objects you know you create a class and then create objects of that class those are put onto the heap in memory and then working your way down is a section in memory called the bss which is uninitialized data or basically global variables that are not initialized and actually i think they are a i think they usually initialize them to zeros and then uh, the next section is the data section or initialized data where you can reserve memory uh, spaces and give it a value at the beginning. And then the uh, code section or text section is where your machine language code is. And of course, assembly language is just an easier way to type machine language. Because machine language, if you had to type that, it'd be ones and zeros. So assembly language allows you to uh, use a more, an easier method of writing your machine language. Okay, so now let's look at the Hello World program using FASM. So I'll go through the parts of it very quickly. Uh, portable executable format is a... This can be either a console program or a GUI program on Windows. And so it's just a format for your executable program that's going to be created. And so then we're, we're doing a 32-bit, x86 32-bit program here. And so we've got to include this right here. Any line that begins with a semicolon is a comment. So anything after it will be a comment or documentation. Okay, so now the sections dot code. This could also say dot text. I just like the dot code better. And so this section is readable and executable. So you put your permissions here. And so this is where your actual code will go. And so this is a user specified label start and semicolon or I mean colon right there. And so you can put labels in here, allows you to jump around different parts of your program. And now I am, to print hello world, I'm actually, in, I'm actually invoking the C print F function. And to do that, you'll need to import it down here. Okay, so uh, this is just an easy way to, the probably about the easiest way to print hello world. And the way the print F works, function works in C is uh, you have format specifiers. So here within quotations, I'm going to print hello world and then percent C. That's a format specifier that says, hey, there's going to be another parameter and it's going to be a character, one, uh, one byte. Okay, and so then after we do that, we put a comma, and then we put our parameters that we're sending to the printf function. And so the number 10 is the ASCII character for a new line. We can't put a backslash n in here, but so we'll have to do a percent %c and then specify another parameter comma and 10 for a new line. Okay, and so now down here, if I didn't have something to keep the console open, then it would just, it would print hello world and the console would just disappear when I run it. So I'm doing a get character in which you need to import down here. And so the get character allows you to, you know, basically do a press any key to continue and it will hold the console open. Okay, so I'm gonna run it and, you know, it just prints hello world. It's doing, it's sitting at the get character right now. 
So if I press my space bar, then it will disappear. Okay, so now I'm not using any variables, but I'm just showing you uh, here is the next section is the dot data section where we can specify initialized variables. So when we, so here you would put the variable name and now you're going to put the variable type. A DD means that it's a 32 bit integer. And then right here is the value of that integer. And of course, this section needs to be readable and writable. Okay, so now to output the value, the, uh, value of that variable, I'm going to do invoke printf, comma, and then I'll put apples is equal to. Now, with the printf, we've got to do the format specifier. So to print an integer, I'll do a percent %d. And I'll go ahead and do a percent %c also to do a new line at the end of this. Okay, so now I'm going to need two parameters. The first one will be apples. First of all, I'm going to show you what happens if I just put the word apples in here. And now the second parameter, I'm going to do a percent %c, so I'll do a new line again, the ASCII character for new line. Okay, so let's watch this run. And um, I'm waiting. Okay, there we go. And so apples equals, okay, this big number right here. Um, so what happened is apples actually corresponds to a memory address on your computer, a relative memory address of where the, that the integer is being stored. Okay, so if we actually, so that's just printed. I'm just printing apples. I'm printing that memory address. If you want the value stored at apples, you're going to need to put brackets, square brackets around it, just like that. Okay, so let's run it. And so now apples is equal to 42. So now with the square brackets, I'm grabbing the value there at that memory address called apples. Okay, so sometimes it's confusing when you use the square brackets. If you're doing a scan f uh, into a variable, then you will not do the brackets. Also, you won't do the brackets if you're doing a, um, a, a string or an array of characters. Okay, so um, let me just do a little bit more here. Um, before we print the value of apples, um, when we're working in assembly, uh, we'll be working with the registers on the CPU. And the registers are uh, our working areas on the CPU where we can store data and manipulate it, do arithmetic on it and stuff like that. Because a lot of times, like if you have two variables stored in memory, you can't add those two variables together. You've got to move one or both of them into these registers right here. Uh, so these for 32 bit program, which we're doing, these are the names of the registers, but these four registers are actually divided into parts into 16 bit registers go, uh, labeled AX through DX. And, and then those are divided into eight bit portions. So you can use any of these if you just need uh, smaller amounts of data. Okay. So just for example, uh, I'm going to. Um, uh, move into register EAX comma the value that's at apples. Okay. And now I'm going to increment the EAX register. And then I'm going to move back into the memory address apples, comma, the value that was at, the value that is in the EAX register. Okay, so here, I once again, I loaded the value at apples into the EAX register. I incremented the register, and then I moved it back. Now, I think we could have just incremented this, but I just want uh, the variable apples into memory. But I just wanted to show you moving it into one of the registers and then moving it back. Okay, so now let's run the program. And there it is. So apples is now 43. Okay, 
Now let's look at a little bit more complicated program. Okay, so this program, um, here I'm going to, let's first look at the data. So in our data section, remember that's initialized data, I'm creating variables number one, number two, and sum, and they're all DD, which means 32-bit integers. Of course, these are, I, and I'm just initializing them to zero. Okay, and then I'm also included this .bss section, which is uninitialized data. Now, you can use, you can just do everything here with this dot data section, but I'm just showing you how to use this. Okay, and so the RB means reserve, and then B means byte. And then this is not the value, that is the number of bytes. So that means reserve 20 bytes to store the first name. Okay, so first name can be up to uh, 20 characters. Um, and then down here, I am also importing scanf. So the C scanf, so I can get keyboard input. Okay, and so now up here in start, what I'm going to do is ask the user to enter their first name, and then I'm doing a scanf. Notice that uh, for the scanf, you don't put the square brackets. Okay, enter a number, uh, formats, well, remember, uh, for the string, the format specifier is percent %s. For an integer, it's percent %d. So I ask them to enter these two numbers right here, no square brackets. Okay, now, uh, I can't, I'm going to add those two numbers together, but I cannot add them to together when they're in memory. It, the compiler will let you know that you can't do that. So I'm moving into the registers. Uh, so remember our registers, EAX, EBX, ECX, and EDX. So I'm moving into ECX, the value that's at number one. I'm moving into EBX, the value that's at number two. Then I'm adding to EBX, the value that's at ECX. So the first parameter is the one that's usually manipulated. Add to the value in EBX that's... Uh, the value that's in ECX. So it's going to add those two numbers together and store it into EBX. Now I'm going to move into the value at sum, the variable sum, uh, EBX, you know, the, the sum of these two numbers. Okay, so now let's print it out. Uh, have a great day. And now I'm doing the uh, to do a format specifier for a string for the first name, I've got to do a 1.20. 20 means up to 20 characters right there. Percent 1.20s. And then I'm doing a percent C, which is for my new line again. And so now to print out the sum, I'm going to do the first integer format specifier, then the second one, and then the third one and then a percent C. So now I've got four parameters, comma number one, comma number two, comma sum, and then the new line. And then press any key to close the console. Okay, so let's run this program. So run it, enter your first name, enter a number, second number, and so have a great day, David. 3 plus 9 is equal to 12. Press any key to close the console. Okay, so just a slightly more advanced Hello World program. And now these labels, once again, these labels, you don't have to have that there, but you can use that. In fact, if I just wanted to put this program into an infinite loop to repeat itself, I could put a, I could do a JMP, which is an unconditional jump back to start. Don't put the colon right there. So now it's just going to repeat. After it does this program once, it'll repeat the program. So it's not even going to do these last two lines. So let's run it. Enter your first name. Enter a couple of numbers. And now it's going back to enter your first name. Enter second number. So it just repeats the program over and over again, which is often good when you want to test something. Uh, with different data and stuff. Okay, I think that's it for the Hello World program. Uh, good luck.
uh, assembly language is very meticulous. It's not very forgiving. So good luck.